everybody. What's up? What's up? It's your boy, GM Ashley in the building. What's up? How y'all doing? I am happy to be here with you guys today. Let's keep it going now. Let's get to the chest because I know y'all want to see some chess. So let me get to these Rock'em Sock'em games. We're going to start when this guy was a youngin. Remember, he was he was born in 87. He was born in 1987, all right? So we're going to go back. He was a GM at age 14. So what I want to do is I want to go to one of his young games when he was showing it, when he was absolutely dropping it. I'm not even going to show you the win he had against Gary. I want to show you this win he had uh, against Jonathan Rousen, all right? Let's take a look at this one. This is in the Olympiad. He was repping his country already at age 17. Figure that out. That's how strong you got to be. All right. Repping age 17. And look at this game he plays. We're going to just go through these games quickly. I'm going to just give you some commentary here. No, actually, this one is not. This is not Rousen. This is this is against Yi Zhang Shuan from China, who used to be the best player in China at some point. So Yi plays sharp chess. Didn't realize he was playing against this gangster, this youngin who was on the way to becoming a superstar. And that he is. So Rajabov says, I'm playing Bishop G5. I'm playing the wild system. Let's make it happen. F4. This used to be the main line, guys. Queen B6, the poison pawn variation. When you play a poison pawn variation, you better be prepped. This is the Bobby Fischer stuff. This is the Gary Kasparov stuff. They used to live in this stuff. Nowadays, they play h6 first. Mvia likes to drop in h6 and then play for queen b6. Is the new nuance they're playing to, to get this bishop off the diagonal. But queen b6 used to be the old move. Queen d2. Queen takes on b2. And when black takes his pawn, black's like, I'm just taking it. Your bishop is offside. Your bishop... Over here, no longer defended this. I'm going to exploit the weakness and disrupt your position and let's go. Well, this is dangerous stuff. Dangerous stuff, guys, because after F5, white is hunting. Takes, 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 takes. We're still in mainline stuff. And now E5. Already lost the pawn, ready to sack another one to open up more lines for the pieces. Takes, takes. This is all theory, was theory for a long time. And now the move 94. Neither side is really developed, but white is more developed than black. And white is talking about attacking already. He's hitting F6, so bishop to E7. And bishop to E2, looking to exploit this H5 square and give check. We're not at the sharp stuff yet. We're just in the opening. This is not stuff that you explain every day. H5 to stop that. And now for the good stuff. Now for the good stuff. Rook F1. When you play a move like rook f1, your opponent sits back and goes, whoa, why is your king on g1? Well, the thing about the king on g1 when you castle is the tactics along this diagonal could save black at some point, all right? We'll throw, throw white off along this diagonal as you try to get your attack going, especially to be able to bring the queen back to that square for safety. Rook f1, however, says, I'm not castling. I'm not planning to castle. My king is best on this square. A serious gangster move all right because everybody in this position would want a castle but to play rook f1 or normally the move rook b3 with sacking on f6 is theory but rook f1 at the time was a novelty by the 17 year old all right now watch how this game unfolds he takes on a2 and now rook d1 so he's got everybody ready he's got everything lined up and he's ready to blast through on the f6 square all right ready to go queen d5 queen is back in the action no trades for you sorry and now the check and now c3 and now white has repositioned and is looking to pick off f6 so black plays f5 okay this may not have been the best move in the world but he was under heavy pressure heavy pressure no pieces developed so what should white do white's knight is under attack most people who are normal would actually move the knight. Maybe play knight d6 and keep it going. The 17-year-old drops queen g3 on the board. This is the young, the young Timor. You might see him now and be like, oh, he's you know, 30s. This is the youngster. Queen g3. 
Let's get the party going. You want to get in on the G7 square or the G6 square, and these squares are tenderoni. Let's keep the attack alive. Obviously, you can't take the knight because uh, you're getting, whoops, made it in one. So that knight is not hanging. So black decided on king f8, guarded. All right, now how to continue the attack? Well, let's park ourselves on this square since he cannot touch the knight. And now the move queen to a4, challenging the knight. We want to capture that knight, telling this knight to move. It's hard to understand why people play the black side of this opening. And I used to play it myself of the poison pawn. This line, though, mm, I managed to draw one game in the line, but mm, no can do for the future. No way. I, stopped, I had to give this one up. I had to give up this particular variation. Now, this is the position. This is the position I want you to take a look at. It is white to move. Queen a4 has just been played. Attacking the knight on e4. All right? We got the pin, so we're not really worried about the knight that way. But the knight is definitely under attack from the queen. c4, knight f6. You got to remember, this queen is also zigging across the board. So a knight f6, suddenly queen h4 check shows up, and there goes your knight. That's not going to work. We don't want to lose like that. That would be embarrassing. All right. Knight to d6. Well, knight to d6. Remember the guy's going to play check and brought the queen in the way and shut the attack down. Or at least try to shut the attack down. You might get a little something going with a check. The king's going to move. Your queen's going to be hanging. That's It's possible. It's possible. But remember what he's trying to do. So. Rook d8. A lot of flash moves. I see a lot of flash moves being shown. Rook to d8. What's the deal with rook d8? Why is everybody all happy about this move? So you can get this move. Don't forget. He's going to check you. And e7. Shut your attack down. And you just felt the pain from playing that move. All right. So that's not going to work either. Bishop takes on h5. This is check. This attack got shut down too easily all right so at the moment no one has found the young 17 year olds move i'm glad y'all are thinking about it trying to work it out to show you how difficult the position actually is all right you know what he played what he did was sweet what he said was the knight doesn't matter and ghost jw just said the move all right congratulations for finding the shot rook to f3 you can have my knight. Rook to f3. He's going to sneak the sneak move to the g3 square and barrel down and do damage. Rook f3 is a monster move. But this is just the beginning of the monstrosity. <laughs> this, of, I shouldn't say monstrosity because it sounds ugly. Of the monster. Mm. I need a right. I need the right now to describe just how vicious the viciousness the hurt but i like the monster the monster how are we going to make a the monstrousness i know it's not a word but that's what i mean all right what's about to happen is ugly he's going to get beat down rook at three is gang stir yes indeed y'all a rook move a rook lift remember it went to f1 and now it's going to dance to the g3 square the greatness of this move though will be seen in the alternatives, the alternative defense, what? Not the alternatives, but the defensive, the alternate possibilities that's about to be played by black or could be played by black. I'm losing my English. It's just killing me. All right. First of all, let's play defense with bishop to h4 check. Bishop to h4. You want to go to g3? I'm going to check you and slow you down. I'm going to slow you down. I'm repeating it, okay? I'm repeating it. Why? Because the winning move is rook to g3. <laughs> like, yeah, mofo. That's right. You want to check me? I am putting my rook on g3 anyway. You thought that was something. I'm coming after you. That's gangster. When you put the move in, the guy checks you, and you block with the piece you're supposed to be using to attack and say, go ahead and take me with check. Go ahead. You want to take with check? 
I'm just going to chill. I am just going to chill. Now, your key defensive piece, the Bishop on E7 is gone, and Rook D8 is coming, is scrumming, and Bishop D7 cannot happen because we're taking it. Bishop B7 can't happen because the Rook is dropping it like it's hot on D7, and you're going to get mated. The game is about to be over. The only move you have right now to stop that is time to take this piece on D1. You got to kill the second Rook. You have no choice. And now take the Knight, and you look at the position. Wait a minute. I'm up material. I'm actually up material. Can you believe it? But you're saying it because you really don't believe it. You got six pawns, all of them, all of them isolated, three of them triplets, all right? Like, what? your pawns are horrible. Look at these. They don't even call them pawns. You call these a pawn? Uh, are these things pawns? These are not pawns. And by the way, why are they talking about pawns either? No great shakes. But the bottom line is, your activity is shot. Let's talk. Let's talk chess. Let's talk. Let's watch you suffer in this position right here because you are dead in the water. Don't go up to G6 because Bishop C2 and your king is getting raked over the coals. Raked like, over the coals. Thanks, Beave Flebus, for the subscription. You're going to die in this line. So don't go up, all right, on Queen F6. But here, after this check, when you go back, white just chills. Says, uh, your pieces can't move. <laughs> Guess who's coming after you? Bishop E4 is coming. Bishop G6 is coming next. Mate is going to happen. You better defend this. And if you play Rook H7, we're just going to check you. And we're going to take this guy. And these pieces aren't working. They're just not in the game. And Queen G6 is coming at you all right this is over over this is done son boom finished okay rook g3 on the menu if you give check so let's go back bishop h4 check is not gonna do it not going to do it all right so what did he do he played rook a7 so let me try to get this rook into the game yeah my rook is better than your rook don't you wish your rook was hot like mine? <laughs> anyway, your rook is garbage. My rook is a boss and a beast. The rook is coming down. Uh, the queen is coming down. The rook is supporting it. You're about to drop. Bishop to h4 he played. Trying to just, I won't take the rook. Please don't hurt me. I won't take the rook. If you just leave it there. That's all I want. Just all I want to do. Well... We don't care about you. <laughs> Knight to g5, blocking the bishop's line to the d8 square. Here it comes. Oh my goodness. The pain, the attack. Black has nothing to do. He threw in a take. He said, All right, fine. I'll take it. I'll try to bring my queen to help out in defense. Queen helping out. Yes. Okay, that's nice. Check full. That's not going to last because your rook was hanging, so you had to defend it. Rook d8. Queen had to take force. Give me that. And again, Queen's off the board, but this time we got the extra knight. King G7. Queen to D6. We're up a piece. This is hanging. This is hanging. You could keep playing if you want to, like maybe this move, to say, okay, I'm still in it. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're dead. You're dead. Bye-bye. It's over. Up a piece. The game is over. Finished. Crushing. This is a 17-year-old. Doing work. Doing absolute work, y'all. This is how you get it done when you're young and carefree. You know what I'm saying? When you're young and carefree, that's how you do it. And that's how he beat Ye Chan Chuan. I'm going to tell you. that I played against Ye and he kicked my ass. But that neither say, that's not to say that that makes him a great player. But he was a great player. And that's what he did again as a 17-year-old. Now, I want to show you another position that he played as a young one. So let's jump to this one. 2005. He's now an 18-year-old. He had the black pieces in this game. We're going to go through this one. Another gangster game. He had black. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of his opponent. Kaj Galeev. Okay, that's, I think I'm close enough. He had black. Now, Timor was known 
is known as the guy who single-handedly rehabilitated the King's Indian. King's Indian was like, garbage. Until Timor said, now I'm going to show y'all how you do it. This is how you do it. That's, all right, how you do it. This is how you do it. So watch this game. Okay, this guy thought he was a gangster. He thought he was Alpha Zero before Alpha Zero. His opponent, Murtas, all right? Hit, my microphone's a bit loud. All right, let me turn it down. Let me turn it down. I'm getting excited. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Or it's just me that's loud. Or it's just me, all right? Because I'm loud. This is how it is. But I did turn it down a little bit. But I could turn it down more until it disappears. But I'm going to leave it right there for now, since you guys said it's a little bit loud. Okay, H4. H4 is, uh, is, and thank you for subscribing with Prime Triso Quant. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now people are telling me it's fine. I should turn it back up. I'm going to try a little bit more, a little bit more. All right. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there. All right. You guys are saying it's good. Now, H4. This, this, if you see H4 in today's chess, you'll be like, H4 is a good move. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. This is a good move. In 2005, this is like, yo, what you doing, man? You know, you, you, you try to do something. And this was like dubious. If Aronian played this right now, everybody would be like, yeah, you could do that. Because Alpha Zero showed us the way. All right? Showed us the way. And now everybody's copying. H4. So C5, here we go. All right, let's get busy. D5. E6. Typical way of attacking the center when a wing attack happens. By the way, an argument is also made for a little Benko action with this line. Play a Benko because H4 looks kind of silly against the Benko. Just look like a wasted move. All right, but although some people today might say, yeah, yeah, you can still uh, do this H4 move. But all right, back in the day, we would have said H4 is weak. Nowadays, H4 looks good. Bishop takes, takes. Now, once white gives up the center, white has to be super accurate now. White can't mess around. So, in this position, you play bishop e2, knight c6. Now, I don't know why white doesn't play h5. Just, if you're going to do it, just go right ahead, right? Just go for what you know. But, he also could have played a different move. Knight h3 to f4 is given by the engines as a way to play this position, or maybe even g5. So, you know, could have, could have gone a bit more aggressive. He played knight f3 instead. And castling into it. Like, go ahead. Make my day because I'm going to attack. Now, watch this. Are you ready, folks? This is what you got to watch. The next few moves. Bishop f4. Your pawn on d6 is hanging. Your, did you hear what I said? It's hanging on d6. Right? Two things attacking it. Only one thing defending. What do gangsters do when weak pawns are attacked? Ignore. That's what you do. Ignore. All right? You don't pay any attention at all. You, that's right. Ignore it. That, those are, those are going to be your favorite words. You say, ignore. would you do attack? Attack my pawn? Ignore. You're like, go ahead, mofo. Touch my pawn and see what I do to you. Go ahead. I don't care. <laughs> no, no, center pawns are overrated. I ignore it. You know, you're not going to make, let me, let me explain something to you. If you showed up at the Maurice Ashley School of Chess, okay? If you showed up and you played the move knight to e8 in this position, you would be physically accosted by guys with serious guns, all right? I'm talking about guns, and thrown out of the club, just picked up and thrown out. You are not allowed to play moves like what? You're 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 doing what? Are you crazy? You can't play no knight back to e8. Like seriously? You're gonna defend some weak pawn? No 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 no. That's not how we do. What we do is we sack him. We said you can have it. And Timor is a gangster. He just says, come, "Cool, come, go ahead." You really think I care about this pawn? Now you're gonna see this move, and you're gonna say. Okay, he's got a little action on the E line. He's got a little action. So, you know, he's going to do some tactics, right? And the guy's like, I'm taking a pawn. I mean, I'm just going to take it. 
taking a pawn. And I'm looking to take another one as well. Like, got it. Now, in this position, there are multiple moves. I'm actually surprised Timur didn't play bishop to g4. I mean, I'm just stunned, frankly, because that looks so juicy. Hitting this pawn, getting ready to take this, getting ready to drop a knight in on d4, all kinds of stuff. That would have been an interesting line, but it's sharp. Don't get me wrong. Bishop g4, e5, you got to be ready for this move. And there's different ways to play. This one, though, is the tastiest. The idea of going here, you're hitting the e-pawn, you're threatening that everybody is potentially going to drop in this position. Instead, he played a more thematic move to the position, queen a5. All right. Now he's pinning this knight. He's ready to take this pawn directly. Your king's still in the middle. And guess who is coming? Guess who is coming? You better start defending. This is a nice move. Tempo gainer for the, for the move. And so his opponent said, I'm getting out of the middle. I'm running. I'm out. He says, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You never should have taken my pawn because look at your bishop now. Look at your bishop's now, bishop now, all right? Just for a pawn. Yeah, you got the pawn. Big deal. But look at the development of white black's forces. Everybody is in the game. Everybody, including this queen, by the way, who's putting pressure in the position as well. Everybody's lined up, and this pin is no fun. And your h4 move looks ridiculous right now. All right? Ridiculous. So he played e5, trying to tie things down. Well, let me, let me lock down that bishop. No, 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 no. This bishop is defended by this pawn. This pawn is being gang tackled by everybody. Pin is on. You feel me? The pin is on. You're about to lose the pawn. You thought you just won. And again, your h4 move looks ridiculous and black pieces are all active. Look at those rooks compared to these rooks. Double barrel shotgun, yo. Mm. Mm. So now he said, okay, fine. Let me clog up the file. Let me just clog it up. Put something in the way. Well, that one has to die. <laughs> that one's got to go, all right? And now pawn takes. And he got his past pawn. He says it's white, but black just took his pawn back. And again on that bishop with the pressure. So had to trade. You can have the bishop. That's out of the question. You cannot have this piece. This piece is now a monster. A monster. This pawn is isolated. You are praying it doesn't die. All right? Like, it looks ugly right now. What's about to happen? Bishop of opposite color is going to favor black. Black's going to be able, if you take back, to put a bishop on the d4 square. You can't do the same. You'll be groveling trying to defend. This pawn will be weak. This queen will show up on the diagonal somewhere. And the pressure will be on. And the rooks are ripping you. So, he played h5. <laughs> like, seriously? What are you trying to do? You don't believe that I'm going to kill you? Well, let's put the knight over here. And he got rid of his so-called weakness on h4. It didn't matter. He was in deep trouble anyway. And he's in deep trouble now. Now he played the move queen to c2. Now, I really want to have you take a look. Just think about this position right now. Black sees the yum scrum delish pawn on d5. Let's remember, he saw a pawn on d6 that he could have taken. He didn't take it. That, that it was under attack, excuse me. He didn't defend it. His pawn on d6 was under attack. He didn't defend it. Now there's a fat pawn in the middle of the board. Let me ask you, any of you out there, you see the d pawn sitting there. You look around. If you take it, he might could play bishop c4, hoping for a little queen g6, but you could drop back. So let's let's just analyze that variation. He goes after you. You could drop back. You could possibly play rook here. Well, actually, dropping back, there might be a little tactics with a little knight g5 action. So let's just shut that down. Rook f5. All right? You say, I don't see his attack. Looks like a pawn. Looks like a pawn. National Master Dale said... Ooh, a juicy pawn. They make great snacks. Love it, right? That looks like a pawn. Looks like a pawn. Why not try to consolidate the pawn up position? That's not how gangsters play, y'all. That's not how gangsters play. And even when he was 18, Timor was a straight gangster. He said, I'm not interested in those stinking pawn. It's blocking up your position. It might be passed. It might be passed. It's not going anywhere. So you know what I'm going to do? 
This is not even necessarily the best move. What he said was, I'm going to keep playing with what I got. And he said, yeah, Yasser would be like, it's a juicer. Ah, tastes like flower beans. I don't know if y'all saw that movie. If y'all can, if y'all caught my reference. Who knows the movie I'm referencing? Flower beans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what Yasser would say. Who caught the movie reference? Somebody knows the movie I'm talking about. What movie? Here we go. Here we go. Silence of the Lambs, y'all. He was talking about eating people, though. All right, so let's get real. That deep ball will be going down in a, in a real sense. Silence of the Lambs. Y'all seen that. Okay, I know y'all seen more movies than I have. Bishop C4 saving the pawn. The guy didn't care about your pawn. He's thinking attack. The queen was the one misplaced piece on that file. He said, I'm coming around and I'm attacking now. I want your H2 square. Let's go. The queen is trying to shift and dance and attack. Your man play rookie one. Thinking I'm keeping him off of me. I'm keeping him off of me. Let me just make a little air. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Here comes the attack. Thank you, Arnvok. Arn, Arn, Af, Arn Af K. Thank you very much for the love. All right. F2 is hanging. You moved your rook. Now your F2 pawn is hanging. That don't feel good. Do it. Also, don't touch my bishop. Don't touch. You're going to die. Don't touch. It's going to hurt badly. All right. So bishop d4. Beastie move. Exploit in the last move. All right. So let me trade and defend. Let me trade and cover. You're right. Watch this next move. King g7. King G <laughs> the H file looking toasty. You're feeling good about opening up the H file now? Now you're really feeling the pain. Here comes the attack. Baba beans. Yeah, indeed. Queen to D2, trying to slow down whatever's going on over here. Maybe get the queen on that side. And now for the true gangster move. Come on, y'all. Call it. The gangster move. The next one is going to hurt his feelings. The next one is going to hurt the feelings indeed. Thank you, Amatory Duck, for the love. You said you finally made a 1,000 listening to me. I appreciate it. And now I'm seeing a lot of moves. Rook H8, Queen G2, King G3, Knight H2, Rook H8, Queen H2, Bishop F2, Bishop F2, Rook H8, Queen G3, Knight H2, Bishop F2, Knight E3, Rook H8, H2, Bishop E3, no one has found the move yet. None of y'all called it yet. Now, third rock, dropping it. Indeed, the true gangster of gangster moves. Rook to E3. Booyah. <laughs> like, what? What the fuck? But I, I didn't know he could go there. <laughs> I didn't know he could go there. Check this out. Queen G3 looks exciting. That looks gangsterish, that gangsterish. Until the guy plays queen d4, check. Ouch. <laughs> oops, oops. <laughs> Mommy, could I have my queen back, please? Looks good. No, no, no. You got to drop the rook in first. Rook e3. What? You see when you play with like rook e3, you gotta do one of these. Pure D gangster, all right? Pure D sick. Cut him off. Cut him off. Gangster move. Rook to E3. It looks invisible. That belongs on the board? What? Who? Dropping it. Boom. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I thought the H file was for the rook. That's what I, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You thought the H file. By the way, the H file, there was a little bit of Queen G6 jammy just in case you weren't paying attention. I just realized something. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Right here, right here. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Right here, 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 here. No, he played queen d6 earlier, so there was no tactic. I'm blind. Okay, sorry, y'all. Let's get back to the action. Rook to e3. Brutal. Brutal. That's gangster facial. I like that. Slice serve. I like that. Gangster facial. You know, you watch, you, you guys watch football, right? When the guy, do one of these, like, where you going? Run, I got the ball. 
in your face. Lay down, young man. All right. That's what we're talking about. Rook to E3. Beastie move, y'all. Like, oops. Whoops. Now he's threatening Rook takes on F3 and Matutski. So the, <laughs> the Rook just moved to F1. And say, uh, I'm going back the other way, y'all. I'm going back the other way. <laughs> he just moved this way. I'm going back the other way. Well, he's hoping. He's hoping that he survives. What is your next move now? The stiff arm. That's what we're talking about. Now, it looks obvious to play Rook takes F3. This looks obvious. And it's probably winning. G takes... Queen G3 looks rosy and scrumptious. And now you got to find some quiet moves like Tate's. Something where th this would be, this would be like the highest level of computer gangsterism. You understand? This looks like, like you, you sit on the guy's face and say, you're not going anywhere. So I'm not even going to attack you. I'm just going to crush you in some kind of esoteric way. That's winning. But what Time Lord did is even worse. To me, in terms of gangsterism, all right? He left his rook there and said, I'm not sacking yet. <laughs> Let me just play this move. I'm going to play queen to f4. I'm chilling. I am now officially threatening to take your knight because your queen is going to hang. And if you play, let's say you play some kind of random quiet move. I take your knight. Your queen's hanging. And queen takes queen. I play rook to, wait, 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 excuse me, my bad, my bad. I take your pawn first with check, and then I take your queen, and then I'm up a piece. And a pawn. And you're dead. Game over. So queen f4, parking on the dark squares, all right? This is an 18-year-old. Are we understanding that he wasn't even 20 years old yet? Okay? Like, stop it. He is taking this boy, ripping him to pieces. So now the queen's hanging. Right? So in this position, he defends the queen. His rook was like, Ugh. his rook went to F1. Wait, wait, I gotta go C1. I gotta go back to D1. And now, he says, now I got you. Now I got you because your rook is misplaced. The fine point. Read the fine print. Now that your rook's on D1, now I will hit you in the face. Now I will check you. Uh, the guy said, I had, I had enough. I had enough. Because you go here, that's going to happen to you. If you go here, go back in the cubby hole and take this beat down. Give me your queen. Give me your queen. All right? That's it. That's it. Game over. He wanted to give the king no running square on D1. So he dragged the, the nuance. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The nuance of the young man. He saw rook f3. There's no question in this position he saw rook f3. He was like, Rick F3, blah, 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 blah. Hold up. Hold up. Let's play nuance chess. Let's threaten his queen first. He needs his queen. Let's threaten his queen first. When the queen came, now that you blocked yourself, now I will whip your ass through the window. You're going through the window now, all right? Because of this sequence, you can't shift to D1 and try to run away. Game over. 18... Yeah, is this Dubov? Y'all are feeling on Dubov. This is why this guy was able to stop Dubov. Because he not only had the tactics like this as an 18-year-old. As an 18-year-old, he also has the solidity. He realized, yes, Raja means king. That's right. And he could be a real force in the next couple of years, people. Watch out for him. Watch out for him because he is a serious player and he's wiser now. He's older and he's wiser. Thank you, Stance FPS, for the Prime subscription. 18 years old and doing this kind of stuff. It's just, it's like, it's like, you know, watching Steph Curry do the do between his legs. Oh, Kyrie Irving, like, whoop, whoop, crossover weight between the legs, back, up, oh, handle, lean back, about to shoot, no, I'm a double pump, curl on the other side, whoop. Laying off the glass, and you're going, what did the guy just do? <laughs> what did the guy just do? Slice serve. Thanks for the subscription. Anton Caridian, thank you for Prime subscription as well, and Puff Mama. I mean, this, this is really, this is all kinds, super stout, subscribing for three months. What's up? Thank you.
I mean, amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. Ridiculous what these folks are doing, what he was doing, the work he was doing back in the day. All right. Now, what about Bishop E3 instead of Rook to E3? Are you questioning the guy's fantastic move? What about Bishop E3? You saw a rook land on E3 and you want to put a bishop there instead? The guy put a rook on E3 and you want to put a bishop on E3? Stop it, y'all. Stop it. Jason Super Mangarza, thank you for the tier subscription. Y'all are showing me love today as I show some vicious games as we are dropping it. Now, bishop E3. A rook is fatter than a bishop. So it's even it's even sweeter. Let me just say that to put a big old ox. Bishop on e3, as Vosterbahn is saying, it doesn't even threaten anything. The rook threatens rook takes. Bishop e3, we just I mean I'm snacking on it. There's no mate, and you're gonna have to you're gonna have to crank up the volume because even if you play rook e3 now, rook takes is not even a threat because pawn takes queen is guarding h2, and you just lost the piece. So sorry. Sorry about that. Not only was Rook E3 juicy looking, <laughs> like, boom, in your face. Excuse me. For those of you who just went deaf from what I, from that shout out. But seriously, a Rook lands on E3 and you go, <laughs> what just happened? Mommy, Ma. the guy might have literally wet himself when the Rook landed on E3. Like, literally <laughs> had to go like I need to go to the restroom for a moment please not just not just wet himself he might literally have <laughs> dropped a little something in his pants and had to change his underwear you understand when a guy plays for E3 you're like what, 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 just, what just happened I'm sorry I'm killing headphones over there but but yo let me tell you you play against Rajabov you might you might have to bring a second set of underwear. You understand? Just in case. You got to bring a second set of undies to the game. The guy might drop rookie three on you. And you're like, what, what the hell? What the hell just happened? Just wear the diaper. Just wear a diaper. Okay. He's like, no. he just, he just, look what the bad man did to me. <laughs> look what the bad man did to me, man. Oh my goodness. You're going to sack your queen? Are we supposed to analyze sacking the queen in this position, y'all? Stop it. I'm going, I'm going a little crazy. Are you also, I mean, it was not intuitive. It was not intuitive. He just saw, he saw rookie three is like, I'm going to kill you now. By the way, it's easy to say it looks intuitive after you look at it. All right. Uh, after you see it. Creative moves are obvious in hindsight. After you see the move, you go, oh, I can do that. Oh, it's actually strong. Oh, it makes sense. After you see it, before you see it is the key, though, to actually seeing a move like Rook E3. Whoop! Park on the E3 square. All right. And by the way, are we are we going to talk about sacking this queen? You can sack your queen. Okay, I'm going to take with the knight. What's the plan now? Uh, your rook's hanging and your bishop's hanging, so you do have to take. Are you still feeling good about this? Take with check. Okay, now you got to go in the corner. Now we're going to bring our queen in. We're hitting your bishop. We're going to threaten this check. We're going to play bishop f4 in the next move. And your king is going to get served. <laughs> You're going to get, ser like, served. <laughs> like, on a platter. It's going to be on a platter, folks. This is just ugly. I mean, are you going to sack the bishop now? Because this is going to hurt. Badly. Bishop E2. What is right now? You're still trying to defend the position? Stop it. Stop it. Are you gonna sack the rook now? Like, stop it. This is pain. This is ugly, pain, death. All of it combined. Actually, this is worse than death. You know when it's you know you're like, just kill me, please. <laughs> like, I don't want I don't want any more. I don't want any more. Just kill me now. I don't want to suffer. I just want I just want to get killed now. You want to play bishop e2 before what? Okay, before what? Your guy drops rook e3 in this position. Bishop e2 now. Rook takes knight is the threat. So rook takes knight is the threat. So what is what is an option here? Bishop bishop e2 now? 
No. Uh, no. Rookie 3 is over! The game is over. It's double X clam. The game is over. This is done. Everything about it is done. Period. It's done. If you've got to give up any material right now against a killer GM, you're going to die. You're not going to fight. You're going to die. Right? That's what's going to happen. The game is done. You can maybe try to keep it going. The game is done. All right? So, this is definitely been analyzed, engine approved, rookie three, game over, nothing to do. Nothing to do. It's gone. You want to play pawn takes? Which variation are we analyzing? I mean, if, if, how much, if you are ready to analyze this position, how many people, if you, if you want to play this position with white, there, how many of you in the chat would like to play against that person who's suggesting to play this position? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. How many of you would love to be black right now with money on the line? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> how many of you be like, pick me, pick me. Who, who am I going to give this position to? And you can handle it with black, all right? Because you've been... I got this. <laughs> I got this. This is the game to win the championship. You got, I'm going to give you five minutes on the clock and you get black in this position. You're playing against Magnus. Yeah, Magnus would probably resign this position. No, Magnus would not resign, but you'd beat him as well. Okay? You'd beat him as well. No question about it. This position is Done deal. Money in the bank. Your dog could win this game with black. Seriously? Are you kidding me? Yes, it's true. <laughs> you got a smart dog. And then a dog will absolutely do it for real. I'm pretty sure I could screw up any winning position. It's true. It's true. It could happen. But what I'm going to say to you guys is, Rajabov, my, Rajabov, got to get that right. Rajabov, I like to get the pronunciation right. At 18, he uh, he could handle his business in this position. You feel me? He could handle this position without any question whatsoever. So that one is done. On to the next one. Now, the next one I'm going to show you, I want to stay in the past. I want to stay in the past and show you another sweet one. What am I looking for? Ooh, that one's too sweet. I'm not going to show you. I'm going to show you chaos. I'm going to show you. Yes, let's go to chaos. We're going to play a man by the name of Alexei Shirov. <laughs> Y'all know about Shirov, okay? Fire on board Shirov. That's Shirov. This is in 2007. So he's grown a little bit. He's 20. He's, he's not 20 yet. This is Vikanze. He's 19. He's 19 against Shirov. Y'all know about Shirov, all right? The 19-year-old says, I'm playing a King's Indian against you. Get it straight. So Shirov's like, all right, we're going to go classical. We're going to go to stuff that's supposed to keep it down. B4. This ran Gary Kasparov out of the King's Indian. Kramnik was dropping this B4 system on him. The bayonet attack. And Gary himself was like, these positions are bullshit. I ain't playing this no more. This is ridiculous, man. I got to get more solid because these guys are testing me with this damn B4 move. All right? The bayonet attack. Rajabov is like, I don't care about no bayonet. What you doing? Let's go. Let's go. I get mine. You get yours. I get mine. Show me. Show me. Now, White probably should just keep going with the attack on this side, but he knows he's playing a crazy person, so he goes positional. No. No, no, no. Now, by the way, you might have seen the knight go and come back. Remember, the pressure is here. All right? So he needs to get his F5 break in first. And now the move F3, shutting that down. And now we start. Now, 96. Now, this move used to be a move that was played with the idea of you might lose this pawn on E6, but you get square for your piece. You get a potential C5 break. You get the D-line activity. You hope. White's going to get all of it. All of it. Knight back to H5. G3 stopping the knight from dropping. And now bishop F6. And here he comes. 
C5, what did I tell you? F4, here it comes. The knight has been given a square after G4. It's able to go back to G7, so it can attack the pawn here and then go here. That's the point of the move. King up, if you take, no problem. Knight C6, the other knight heads to the D4 square. Takes, takes, and knight D5. Knight D4. Now we got a struggle. Black has planted his piece, his knight on a really good square, and he takes the pawn. White doesn't mind this, though. White was looking forward to this kind of position. Trade off and go. So White's thinking, I got the file. I got the pawn. I'm going to come after you. And my bishop is going to crack you open on the long diagonal. It's an interesting evaluation. And here he comes. Forced to defend for now. All right. You weaken the pawn. Let me go after it. No, not yet. All right. I'm not sure about White's last two maneuvers. But black now is definitely eyeballing this pawn on d6. And the point here is to bring a rook to c6. So he's like how deep this idea was actually. He got b6 to happen. He said, why did he do that? Now he gets a weak square c6 so he can attack the d6 pawn. That was deep, I got to say. I didn't even see that point. Well, you're going to get your pawn. I'm going to go for my attack. And I'm going to sack a pawn so I can come get you. White is fine here. Got to keep a level head because the black attack is coming at him. Knight g5 possible. He plays rook c6. And now the party starts. g5. This is what I want to get to. The fun starts now. g5. Here he comes. The move g4 will happen. f3 might happen. Knight f4 check might happen. Here comes the attack. This is usually what happened. White breaks through on the queen side. Black breaks through on the king side. Now you have to defend perfectly. I'm going to tell you the defense the engine gives. Okay. I'm going to tell you the defense the engine gives. You're going to be like, yeah, right, whatever. The engine says you should play h6. Make human moves, please. Make human moves. The point is to drag this queen away because the knight is guarding this knight. So you can play a move like rook g1, possibly h3, to guard against g4. That's engine stuff. I get you. I get you, engine. You're going to say stuff like that. We guess we got to believe you. But humans don't play chess like that. That's deep. Instead, Shiro plays a, logic, a logical move. He takes on D4. On D6, excuse me. And now, he's going to get his feelings hurt. But can you imagine, he played rook takes D6. This E pawn, I told you what White's plan was. White not only gets the pawn back, White now breaks open the diagonal for the bishop. White is on the edge, on the cusp of the, the brink of breaking through and splatting Black's center completely. All right? You would look at this and say, young buck, I'm giving you a lesson in strategic chess. You're about to get served when this position opens up. Don't you know wing attacks don't work? Center attacks is what it's all about. Don't you know that? No, I don't. Let's go. Let's go. I'm coming to get you. Let's go. Go ahead. Make my day. Go ahead. Take my pawn. You want it? You can have it because I'm going to check you. And if you dare try to hang out, I'm just going to attack. What do you have? You ain't got no mate. Ain't nothing happening down here. If you take me on G7, check this out. Check this out. If knight takes, it's actually mate. Wow. Cool. That's great. What if king takes, though? What if king takes? This is how gangsters roll. My king is there. Go ahead. It's in your face. Hit it. Hit it. What are you going to do? Queen e5 check? Chilling like a villain. Whoa. Uh, what? <laughs> Isn't this me? Isn't this going to be mate? Like, what are you doing? Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Go ahead. <laughs> His king just ran up the board. <laughs> where's the mate? I know where the mate is. Your king is getting mated. That's where the mate is. Queen h2 is coming and then queen f2. That's where the mate is. This is over, Rover. You are done, son. This is out. I can't figure out a rhyme with out yet. I'll get at it. <laughs> Look, man. There's no mate. What the hell? How did he survive this? This king dance and prance and there's no mate. What the hell? 
What the? I mean, come on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What What? what did Akratic say? That's why 8-6 earlier worked, given the one tempo necessary to defend. You know what, Akratic? <laughs> you know what? I get you. I get you. But don't act like the justification after you've seen this madness, this insanity, this absolute lunacy that we just saw on the chessboard. And we're going to talk about, oh, yeah, H6 as a tempo. Excuse me. Let's, let's appreciate the psychotic position we have in front of us. If you're sure of, you're thinking he's dead. I, 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 but I got what? But, but, but what? I mean, there's nothing to do. How am I getting mated? I just chase this king up the board, and I can't even play. Somebody pointed out queen d4. Is, I can't even guard. It wouldn't even matter because queen h2 and g, g2 is coming as well. But you can't even guard the mate. It's like, you're getting mated. Sorry, I'm just using my one little trump. I'm holding on to one tiny little pawn, and it's going to be the thing that finishes you off. While you're busy swinging. I mean, can you imagine the great Shirov staring at this position and going, I'm not just killing the guy? Like, he's not just... How is he getting out? How the hell is he getting out? Like, how is this happening? Bishop takes on G7 check. How is this happening? Now, by the way, he could have slow moded and played King H7 as well. King H7. That's a move. That gets him out too. If we bring our bishop back to guard, no, this is, this is going to be bad. It's going to be bad. It's be bad. Get the queen. Takes. Check. The king moves up. Check him again. But but we don't want this variation. This variation doesn't end in mate. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We're winning material in this line. Screw that. We, we're gangsters. Gangsters stick their... Ho, ho, ho. Stick their king's faces in it and say... Go ahead. Go ahead. Hit me. Hit me. Go ahead. Let me see it happen. And by the way, what was the mistake? When he didn't play the move 8-6. As Akratic pointed out, he should have played 8-6. He started taking stuff and G4 happened to him. That was the mistake. He should have played the genius 8-6 move. But geez, you got to find 8-6? What? Like, seriously? When, you, when it, it looks... I mean, the guy's... The guy's king is like, sick. like I'm attacking. How is he? How did he just duck and dodge and whoop, 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 what? <laughs> Yo, that was some very bad boxing right there. <laughs> boxing to bob and weave. But hey, wow, that's that's that. You feel me? So Shirov must have been sitting on this position back here, staring at it and going, I don't believe this nonsense i don't believe this clown is getting out of the, what okay let me do a shirov on him and sack my queen i'm gonna sack my queen let me do a shirov and sack my queen and show him who's the real attacking star now the threat by the way is mate in one so respect that so he took it took it check and bishop c4. Bishop c4. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> now, where did this come from? Who's attacking who right now? What? Now, Shirov's back. He's got a rook d5 possible, followed by some kind of nasty looking disco. The bishop is a beast on the long diagonal. He shut down one of your pieces. He's going to get a rook back. It's all looking good. It's all looking good like it should he's back Shirov is like i'm a gangster who 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 are you talking to son who are you talking to well the 19 year old said e excuse me mr Shirov. in your face let's start with this one what you got what you got for this one now be careful be very very careful because the variation runs if you take this we starting to check you it's too many checks. It's too many checks. It's, give me your bishop. It's too many checks. That's not going to work. All right. So you can't touch my pawn. But Shirov probably saw that. Shirov said, I ain't no fool. I'm, I'm hiding in the corner now. I'm hiding in the corner. I'm still coming after you. Bluffing. Nobody believes you. Now, there are different ways to cover yourself up right now. 
There are different ways to cover yourself up. Maybe put a rook here, get ready to sack. Mm, no, we don't want to do that. Maybe just play a queen move and then give the rook back after you take with the bishop. This guy could have played logical chess. Logical chess. Okay? His next move is completely ridiculous. I'm going to tell you right now. If I was a commentator and I saw this move, I would stop. I'd look and be like, the guy is nuts. He's nuts on a cracker. Okay? How is he playing his next move? You ready for this? Knight takes h5. The house is burning down. Your rook is on... Yeah, queen f2 makes sense. Queen f2 threatens something. You understand? Actually, maybe you might want to threaten something. Maybe. That, that might be a, a logical thing to do. You guys are right. What about queen g5? Threaten the rook. Threaten mate also. Unfortunately, when the guy does this and then does that, you're in trouble. <laughs> because now the pin's on. The bishop's coming. The stream's in. Okay, you you lucky you survive after a move like you'd be lucky to survive. Sorry, but you, you're, you're still on skates. You're on skates in this position and crying. So, no. There are other moves that are luck, luck, queen. Like, why not queen f2, you say? Let's play queen f2. Why, why not that? After all, after takes and rook blocks, he's probably got to defend. We take his bishop. Like, does he have anything? Is he going to play like a doubling of the rooks? Maybe. Yeah, he would do that, wouldn't he? Then we go after him and he could take. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm not liking this line. I got to hide in the corner? Nah, I don't care if I'm winning. We're not playing this position. That would be wild. No. What he did was he took on h4. That frees his king, his king to go up as needed. And this is what he was ready for. Check this out. First of all, if you take his rook, sorry, your attack dies. Shut him down. The attack is done. All right? That's not going to work. So the guy played rook check. Now watch the skills. You can check. I can check. <laughs> you got to love moves like this. Knight g3, check to a check. Now you've got to take with your rook. That's a check. I've got to take with my pawn. Indeed, my queen is hanging. I know. So what? Got him. Got to. Check. King moves. Check him again. The bishop guards f1. The bishop guards f1, you say. Not when I play it. Go ahead, take it. Check him again. And now I take your bishop. And at the end of it, he's got this rook hitting that. He's got this rook coming down. You're down material, down in exchange for a pawn, and you're begging for a draw. Begging. Please, mister, could I get a draw? No, you're not going to get a draw. You can try, but you're not defending this position. Defense? No defense. All of a sudden, your king's cut off, and guess who's lazy crazy about to get behind you? And you're not defending all these weaknesses. He brought king back. Sorry, here come the rooks. Try to king up. Next rook. King up, the other one. Not the check, by the way, and let the king run. No, we're stopping you because we want to trade off rooks and whoop you silly. King up, trying to hide. Oh boy, guess who caught themselves in a mating net? You're about to get served. You're about to get served. A rook's showing up here. The other one got you behind. Your pieces can't move. You're tied down. You're just dead. Shirov said, I had enough. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's it. Done. What is this? What is this? If you saw a 19-year-old doing this, guys, you would be saying, he's the next world champion. He's one of the best of the best. He's going to get it done. Very short order. Somehow, it doesn't come together for him. It doesn't come together for him. At some point, he has to stop chess and take a little bit of a break. Just didn't come together for him fast enough. But now as you watch him, 
you see the original talent. You might say, okay, maybe it wasn't all super accurate, accurate, and maybe he could have been a little bit calmer, more sane. But when you see Dubal play and you see this, what do you say? You say, this guy's like, no wonder he beat Dubal because he he's a boss player. He's a boss player. Absolutely boss player. All right. He was 19 then. He's 33 now, about to turn 34. So he's not a young gun, but he's peaking. He's peaking. And I would say if he can somehow get it together, the next candidate cycle, he could make a real run. Absolutely. If he can get it together. And he's shown by winning the Air Things Masters that he's got game. He's got game. He's still there. 34 is not too old, especially when you took a break. Remember, he took a break. When you take a break, recognize that the burnout factor isn't there. The burnout factor isn't there. So he is still hungry. He knows he had that talent. And if you got a country who's backing you the way Azerbaijan is, is backing him, you know that he is fresh and eager and ready. Now, admittedly, he's 34. He's about to turn. He's not 34 yet. He's about to turn 34 in March. So we got another two-year cycle, maybe three. So he's got to really bring the energy. He's got to do the high-level workouts. He's got to eat right. He's got to do everything right so that he, so that he keeps that high-level energy. And if he, if he can peak with the kind of play he's displaying right now, I mean, he's a boss player right now. Top 10, okay? So watch out. He's gonna definitely show some skills.